Hi, Colin. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Thanks for doing this. This is a great service for our little community of uh, physicians who are interested in lifestyle medicine. So I really appreciate you taking the time out to to do this with us. So. Oh, okay. Oh, give me one second. I got to pause sure. something real quick. No worries. <laughs> Sorry, I have to shut off the TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just introduce you to our audience. And I think by now our audience is pretty um, uh, savvy about how this works with StreamYard. You're, I think about the maybe the 12th person or the 13th person I'm interviewing. So um, they come on live. If they have questions, they can post it in the comments box and then you get to answer them. And so it's pretty interactive. So, uh, but mm -hmm. let me introduce you first. So Dr. Colin Zhu is a primary care physician board certified in family practice and lifestyle medicine. And he's passionate about the intersection of medicine, food, and nutrition. He's trained as a chef and a health coach at the Natural Gourmet Institute for Health and Culinary Arts and the Institute for Integrated Nutrition following completion of his medical degree. And uh, he has launched the Chef Doc website which is an online wellness and lifestyle education platform. And this has been featured in many magazines, O Waves and Brit Plus Co. Colin is also the author of Thrive Medicine, How to Cultivate Your Desires and Elevate Your Life, and uh, runs a podcast called Thrive Bites. And I've listened to a few episodes and they're really fun and super cool. So uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Colin. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, I'd like to start off by just, you know, if you could give us a little bit of your background and um, how you came about being interested, particularly in lifestyle medicine. Sure, sure, definitely. Well, thank you so much for having me here. Um, and uh, I really appreciate being here um, amongst the community uh, with a lot of healthcare, you know, practitioners, uh, our fellow physicians uh, that are uh, very, very, you know, very excited to be in this field um, or learning about it or just getting started. And if I could offer anything uh, or contribute anything from my story, um, I'm hoping it will help as well. So, um, so uh, you have given me uh, what to, you know, what to talk about. And so I actually put it together in a little presentation um, and you let me know uh, when to interject with questions and hopefully it's a good flow for you and your audience. So, let me just switch that right now. Can you see me? Yeah, let me, uh, yeah, I got to add you to the stream. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah. And you can hear me okay, right? Looks good. Perfect. Okay, excellent. So uh, my, you know, story is unique. Um, I think everyone's story is unique um, because everyone is a unique human being. So this is how I've come about with my journey. So. Um, so just a little bit about me in relation to lifestyle medicine. Um, I've been uh, a member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine since 2013. Um, I helped start the first professionals and training board. Um, I started when I was a resident. Um, and um, I'm still trying to figure out how I came about uh, with lifestyle medicine. But, you know, you know, if you believe in uh, serendipity or you know, universe giving you signs, it kind of leads you on a certain path. So yeah. uh, I kind of, I kind of just found my way to American College of Lifestyle Medicine and, uh, you know, basically called in my new home and tribe. And then um, in 2017, um, I sat for the boards for it, um, you know, being one of the first class of uh, physicians to be boarded. Um, so very, very exciting day. So in order to talk about uh, my journey, I think I need to kind of go back to the beginning. And so how I got into medicine was uh, this woman right here, who is my mother. Um, she is a Chinese medical doctor. Um, she uh, has been practicing close to four decades now. Um, and uh, she has her own practice in Staten Island, New York. And she really instilled in me um, pretty much the concepts of compassion, empathy, 
um, looking at the person as a whole, um, really looking at a holistic approach to the patient and to a human being or person. Um, I don't I don't come from a long line of MDs. Um, in fact, I was probably I'm probably the first Western trained physician. Um, and in the beginning, I wanted to kind of marry uh, East and West. Um, and so I went into uh, medicine uh, thinking I was going to do that. And, uh, you know, somewhere along the way, um, you know, I just, you know, changed routes. Um, let me see. So this is what I did. So when I was in medical school, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of your audience members could relate is that we had a paucity of nutrition and lifestyle education uh, curricula. For me personally, I, uh, I only received around 10 hours of nutrition and that was pretty much just biochemistry. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it wasn't really enough. Um, so after I graduated uh, medical school, um, you know, I did a lot of research um, and just looked up a lot of stuff. Um, my, both of my parents, I was very blessed in that both of my parents cooked and I grew up on, you know, traditional Chinese cuisine. Uh, my dad's from Southern part of China. My mom's from Hong Kong and, you know, they, you know, cooked, um, a lot growing up. So I was very familiar in the kitchen. So in order to learn about more about food, um, you know, I felt like I needed to go back to the roots. And what I mean by that is a lot of what we face today is our chronic, you know, disease epidemic, our chronic obesity epidemic, diabetes, et cetera, the list goes on. And the common denominator to all that is how, you know, what we put in our mouths, how we move our bodies, our, you know, mindsets, you know, how we handle, you know, different things and events in life. And so I just felt like I needed to learn about that more. So uh, how, did you, how did you make that connection? Because most of us who trained in conventional Western medicine there, you know, there wasn't that much emphasis on those factors. It was more about, uh, you know, a pill for every ill kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I learned it through growing up, working in and out of my mom's office, you know, mm -hmm. and looking at the different presentations, the people, um, the different pathologies and how she came about looking at medicine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until 2009, I started looking at different types of medicine. So in 2009, um, when I was very early, um, before I went into school, um, I looked, I, I, I shadowed my first integrative medicine doctor and he had all kinds of stuff. He ran all kinds of labs that you wouldn't routinely, you know, uh, look at. He looked at like heavy metals. Um, he looked at like, you know, different nutritional panels. He did chelation, IV therapy, the whole works, ozone therapy. Right. Um, and it was interesting because at that year I actually stopped dairy. Um, ah. in 2009, um, I stopped dairy. I was drinking like three glasses of milk. Um, and that probably, you know, got me to where I was to, in terms of a growth spurt. Um, and, uh, and I loved it. There was nothing better than an ice glass, cold uh, glass of milk, but I noticed that I was very bloated and, um, you know, I just didn't feel that great. And 2009, I just kind of, you know, researched about it, study about it and said, it just doesn't make any sense. One, I am not a baby cow and, you know, that's pretty much it. So I stopped that right. and just kind of moved on, um, mm -hmm. you know, pretty quickly. And that was influenced about from that doctor that I shadowed. Mm -hmm. From there, um, I shadowed a plethora of other uh, practitioners, uh, naturopathic physicians, uh, functional medicine physicians, alternative medicine. So I kind of ran the whole gamut mm -hmm. before I ended up with lifestyle medicine because I kind of feel like, it's like food or maybe like clothing for certain people. Like, you know, it'll either work out, you know, you either, you know, you'll either resonate with it. You'll either look good on you or it doesn't. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, lifestyle medicine for me, I felt like it was a calling to me and it resonated with me. And for me, like I was already practicing lifestyle medicine. I was already physically active. Um, I switched over to plant-based in about six years ago after my uh, first marathon and, um, you know, that's how I, that's how I came about, you know, to Got it. Medicine. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, so after my medical school year, I graduated off cycle and I had a gap year because I stayed back and took on a teaching assistant role. And so I graduated off cycle, I had a, about a year. So I was like, what am I going to do with this? And so having that knowledge or lack there, lack of knowledge of not having nutrition and lifestyle and knowing that that was going to be 
a huge part in what I was going to practice in the future, mm -hmm. um, I needed to go back to food. And so I enrolled myself into culinary school. And as you can see, um, these are just a few pictures of, you know, my experience. And it was, you know, pretty much a very life changing experience. Um, a lot of culinary schools are grounded in the French technique. So what that means is, you know, their foundation is like salt, butter, egg, you know, just a lot of fat, you know, things right. like that, you know, amazing, amazing, you know, uh, technique and cuisines and, you know, just churn out a lot of great chefs that we know to this day, but it wasn't the type of food that I wanted to prepare, not just for myself, but, you know, in the future, like patients or family members, you know, things like that. So I enrolled mm -hmm. myself into the Natural Gourmet Institute, uh, which started back in the seventies and um, it was health supportive mm -hmm. and it was um, plant-based. So it had more like Asian influences. It had, you know, just a lot of other types of influences. And I was like, this is it. And um, that was in New York. Mm -hmm. And that was around the time that I also got my health coaching certification as well. So when you say plant-based, uh, were they like 100% or was there still some, um, you know, meat and butter and dairy being used? Yeah. So basically it's a good question. So they weren't a vegan school, but they were plant predominant. So meaning like if you could find, so basically they had other uh, standalone classes in terms of meat preparation, seafood preparation as kind of like, you know, gave people an option um, if they wanted to incorporate that for other clients, because a lot of culinary graduates, what they end up traditionally doing is they'll end up working, you know, for a restaurant, um, hotel, hospitality, uh, catering, or they'll cater towards private clients. Right. So not everyone is going to be, you know, let's do, you know, vegan or plant-based. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just, um, so they needed to have other options under their belts, you know, in case they needed to cater towards those specific clients. But the school positioned themselves very, very, well, ahead of its time, you know, you're talking about in the seventies, yeah. um, that they were already thinking about this ahead of time because the founder was, you know, she was a PhD and uh, she knew that this was going to be important. Um, so the school was very ahead of the time, but, uh, since maybe a couple of years ago, they got acquired by, um, the Institute of Culinary Education. And, um, you know, so, you know, that's how they're continuing right now. So awesome. Um, so moving on, um, so talking more about how I got into lifestyle medicine, like I said, I started at the resident level. So back in like 2013, 2014, we formed the first professionals in training. I started like everyone else, just hearing word of mouth and started going to the conferences and I just kind of put myself in there and put myself out there, you know, just learning more and more and more. And, um, I was able to, you know, help these guys, this is Dr. Ingrid Edstein, you guys may recognize, yeah, yeah. Uh, John Bonnet. Um, this is Ashley Maltz. Uh, she's an integrative doctor out in Texas. Um, uh, this is Dr. Uh, Stegman. This is Camilla. So, the, you know, so we basically formed the first board. And um, at that time, ACLM wasn't as big as it um, is now, you know, like from 2013 till now, it literally exponentially like blew up. Yeah. Um, so it was still a very small, um, you know, movement. We didn't have lifestyle medicine interest groups or uh, chapters as mm -hmm. we do now. Um, so, you know, this was kind of like the, the, the start, the catalyst to all that. So, mm -hmm. um, so from there, you know, what happened? So a lot of people, when they found out about what I did, they asked me like, okay, do you do this on the side? You know, is going to culinary school a hobby? And I said, no, I mean, you know, I knew that I wanted to go into family medicine because one, I get bored easily. <laughs> and two, <laughs> uh, you know, I like the challenge of having something different, you know, walking into my door. And then three, I really, really enjoyed primary care in terms of establishing that relationship and rapport with patients and being able to counsel and coach them. Right. And so with all that, that's how I got into family medicine. And I knew that what I'd learned thus far would be able to enhance it. So mm -hmm. that was my uh, thinking going in. And, um, that's how I, you know, went into it. So mm -hmm. 
these are, I'm just going to show you some examples. So I started out, this is uh, when I was a resident um, and I started having, you know, demos with other residents uh, whenever we have our uh, rounds or in services and things like that. So I was already applying food as medicine, wow. you know, just, just from this stage. Um, so. <laughs> Did you get a, a lot of pushback or how, how was it accepted? Because, you know, so I got into a program that was um, a brand new program. It was an osteopathic program. And our medical director at the time, he studied, he was a functional medicine practitioner for many, 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 many years. And so, you know, when I gave him, when I offered this idea, um, it wasn't like, you know, like right. totally over his head, it, it, you know, he, he gave me an opportunity and I took it. So awesome. That's so fantastic. Yeah. Um, from there, um, I went to community talks and um, I started to develop, you know, my niche um, and my skill as a public speaker. And, um, and in my opinion, I feel that whoever's listening, if you haven't had a chance to do any public speaking, I think it's a fantastic avenue to not only build up you, your reputation and your brand um, and the products and services that you offer, but it educates people more efficiently. Like it's, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I've always enjoyed um, and wanting to reach as many people as possible you know, right. hence everything I've done so far. Mm -hmm. um, but giving talks is great because, you know, you're able to interact, you're able to see the expressions on people, you know, I mean, this is pre COVID, you know, when we were, you know, <laughs> you know, in a room, um, but you know, you're able to interact with them and um, you know, you're able to just kind of see, you know, what they see and how they react and that feedback, that live feedback is very important. And um, it educates people like right there. So this was a community talk um, when I was still a resident, um, probably a, a year later. And um, I paired up with, um, you know, she is, uh, this is uh, Beth Hilson. She is a gluten-free uh, author. Mm -hmm. um, and I just paired up with her. And our topic for this talk was talking about healthy grains. Mm. Um, so, you know, we made a couple of dishes and, you know, we just kind of talked about, um, you know, that with the community members. So that mm. was fun. Where, uh, where was the space? This space was in the hospital. Uh, oh, wow. This was in the hospital in some sort of like... Uh, probably like an educational, uh, yeah. like uh, outside forum. It was, you know, next to the hospital garden. So we, you know, I, I asked the hospital administration, you know, can I borrow this for like an hour? And, you know, you, I just kind of put myself out there. They put yeah, me in the exactly. community, they put me in the community magazine newsletter just to promote it. And it was a yeah. good turnout. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Did you do several of those through, through your uh, residency? Say again? Did you do a, a fair amount of those community um, talks during the residency? We, um, I mean, residency was busy, so yes, you know, I, 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 I snuck in as 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 many as I could. So I only did like you know not not that many, so like a couple to about a handful or so. Yeah. So, but yeah. it's a good good way to start, right? Because a lot yes. of people have this hang up. Well, when I'm done, then I'll do this, or you know, it's kind of like just you know, go for it. Yeah, yeah, you just go for it. And, yeah. you know, and the thing is, is that I was already comfortable in my own skin. So, you know, for those of you, um, you know, that might be uh, reluctant, you know, just honestly, you just never know until you go out there. Don't think of it as, you know, if you do have like a trepidation with public speaking, like don't think of it as like, you know, what am I going to say? I'm going to stutter and trip over my words. What am I going to, you know? I would say just go out there, give it a go, you know what I'm saying? And think about what information you want to convey to your audience as opposed to what you're going to feel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like think about how I'm going to educate people through what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And then if you focus on that, then it'll be better for you. You know, it's all about what you focus on. So right. that's a great tip. Um, so moving on. So this is my first, um, I started presenting, um, as a speaker, um, at conferences, uh, not too long ago, maybe like four years ago. And this was my first one. Um, I did it with the American college of, uh, preventive medicine. This was their annual conference. This was in DC in 2016. And basically I kid you not, um, you know, this was literally just a hotel conference room. 
There was wow. no kitchen, no running water, nothing. Wow. So you have to call ahead of time and work with the kitchen staff and be like, I need this, this, and this, and this, mm -hmm. and see how they can accommodate you. So yeah. it's, a hit or, it's a hit or miss. So it doesn't always work, but, um, you know, the workshop sold out. Um, I think it was their first workshop that actually sold out and had a waiting list. Nice. Um, and I was very hum uh, humbled by that. And I just, you know, did a couple of recipes with them and it was a lot of fun, you know, it's mm -hmm. much better than, you know, I think the interaction of a workshop works out better than, um, you know, just, you know, watching a presentation. So True. Mm -hmm. um, this was another one where, uh, you know, John Hopkins, um, you know, the preventive medicine residency, they heard about what I did and they hired me as a consultant to teach their community. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, to teach their uh, residents. So this was a very, very, very cool um, opportunity because mm -hmm. these residents, uh, what they do in the city of Baltimore is that they paired up with um, a church and they hold these weekly community classes. And in these classes, they give health talks, they do cooking demonstrations, you know, the whole bit, the preventive medicine re uh, residents. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me, to help them, you know, teach, you know, the cooking portion, the culinary medicine portion. And so th the residents can learn and teach the, the, re uh, the, 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 um, the residents of the community. Right. Right. So basically you're teaching the teacher. Essentially. Yeah. And that's essentially what I wanted to do was to create yeah. a ripple effect. So, um, I have a three minute, uh, presentation. So, Explain everything. Those are real knives. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> How many doctors are they? Let's 
Yes. And then we also have some hickam, all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, with some fresh vegetables, oh, yeah. romaine, and red and yellow of bell peppers. So this looks fantastic, guys. So, so this is what you guys can make on a plant-based diet, and John Hopkins is doing it up right here. So, all right, dig in. <laughs> All right. That is so cool. I mean, were you, were you able to see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even having the kids, you know, participate and learn some knife skills and learn yeah. how to do it. And uh, that is amazing, really. Yeah. It's like Thank a lot you. of fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that little boy, um, you know, that I was, you know, uh, teaching presentation to, uh, he, he was just a neighborhood kid that was just, coming along the streets and and knew that we had classes and he just pulled up on his bike and just came in into the church to kind of attend um and then some of the residents brought their own kids and you know it, it, it's fun and i think the best part about cooking is that it fosters the relationships yeah. um you know even more it gets you back into the kitchen and you know it's really quality time that we're missing you know pre-covid and post-covid you know what i'm saying so it's yeah. you know we we need to continue with that. And that's also an added benefit of, you know, teaching people, you know, cooking. Okay. Um, let's see. Oops. Go back here. So, um, I mean, I guess the point also is, you know, we don't necessarily need to go to culinary school to do this, right? Like, I mean, Many of us cook at home and you can just take a couple of dishes that you're comfortable making at home. It can be a quick salad, you know, five bean salad could be, you know, just a simple soup or a, or a vegan chili. It doesn't have to be complicated. And I guess in terms of equipment, if you have like one of those induction, you know, I have a round induction cooktop that just plugs in anywhere really. Mm -hmm. and you know, maybe a, an instant pot or something like that, a few pots and pans. So it, again, it doesn't need to be, you know, uh, very sophisticated or complicated to do this. No, no, not at all. And I'm not, you know, insinuating that people, you know, go to school or anything like that. Right. Uh, but it's really about, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't know the correct expression. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, if you, you know, a fisherman, you know, if you, if you fish for someone, you know, you keep them fed, but if you teach them how to fish, you know, right. they'll have a new skill for a lifetime. So it's the same thing with here is where, you know, you teach uh, how I go about it is that you teach them, you know, very few skills that can be multiplied and replicated. Yeah. And then, you know, you just need basic uh, kitchen utensils, like a nice saucepan, uh, a pot, um, you know, spatula, a good knife, good cutting board, um, you know, stuff like that and, um, basic ingredients in the fridge and pantry and just off you go. And, you know, you just, you know, just, uh, you'll be, you'll be amazed of what you can do. Um, but you just gotta go and try and apply yourself, you know? So, yeah. well, one of our viewers is a fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so moving on, um, these are just a couple more conferences that, you know, um, I help lead, uh, you know, the Lifestyle Co uh, College in uh, Naples, um, and then another preventive medicine college uh, conference as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the big question is how uh, medicine has been applicable for me personally and professionally. Um, I've mm -hmm. talked a little bit so far. And uh, number one is uh, you kind of have to educate yourself and learn right. from, learn from you know the greats. And uh, right. you know obviously these pictures, I'm sure they're very. We we all know who these guys are, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know they're they're very you know they're pioneers. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, saying. And I think the conference, um, the college, the organization has done a really good job in terms of getting everything into one spot. Obviously there's a lot of information out there, but mm -hmm. you know, it's fantastic that, you know, we already have things we can rely on. Um, and then, you know, you learn from them 
And the biggest thing is applying it into your own life. Um, you know, I, you know, live and breathe, you know, what we call lifestyle medicine, you know, before, you know, it didn't have a name, but I always believed in an active lifestyle. So, you know, for me personally, you know, I've been a triathlete um, since 2006. I started, um, you know, racing um, my last year in college. And um, I made it a personal goal to, you know, just live a very, very, you know, active lifestyle. And, um, you know, I made it a personal goal to do a race, doesn't matter if it's a 5k or a tough mudder or a marathon or whatever, to do a race um, in every state in all in all 50 states before I turned 50. And so nice. currently I'm at 27, 28 right now. So, okay. Yeah. So, so getting there, getting there. Um, and, uh, yeah. So how else I've applied it is, um, honestly just fostering good relationships, you know, mm -hmm. like here, you know, I, uh, you know, I work as a traveling physician. Um, that's something you probably don't know is that I spent my first four years postgraduate, um, as a traveling physician and, um, I worked in four different States and I wanted to look at different kinds of practice types. So I went to the VA, I went to Indian health. I, Went went to community, you know, health uh, 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 settings. Um, I was in Nevada, Louisiana, um, Washington, um, and I'm currently in Los Angeles right now. And um, I've also applied it, you know, um, you know, basic education to uh, in medical missions. Mm -hmm. um, this is a picture um, in Cambodia. We did a medical mission, um, you know, at a um, uh, uh, fishing, uh, fishing islands, um, off of, uh, Cambodia and, uh, you know, very poor access to healthcare. So just, you know, basic, uh, skills that you would teach them and education like dental hygiene and, you know, hygiene in general, you know? So, um, so yeah. And, uh, you know, since 2017 as, um, uh, Dr. Yo, Yo, uh, Yoshara, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, uh, uh, you know, explained in the in the beginning is um, I started a platform um, back in 2017, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I, the the Chef Doc platform, and I wanted to reach as many people as possible. Since then, I've you know wrote a book, um, talk. It's kind of like half memoir, half you know self empowerment. Um, you know, highlighting the different experiences that I've, um, you know, went through in my own life and professionally. And then last year, um, it's been 14 months now, I started my podcast series and um, called Fry Bites. And uh, it is, we're at around 65 episodes now, um, 14 months, and we have about almost 12,000 downloads and around 84 countries I've listened in so far. Wow. Oh, that's and fantastic. it's been amazing. And yeah. you know, I've never listened to a podcast before I started. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was doing. Everything was <laughs> DIY. Writing a book is DIY. Launching a website is DIY. And my my point to convey all this is not yeah. to highlight all this, but is to kind of use me as an example that if I could do it, you could do it. So whatever, you know, the audience members, you know, if you have questions about putting yourself out there and just launching your stuff, just like go for it. You know, um, some of you are, you know, uh, are members of doctors on social media. Um, I think leveraging social media, um, is a great way to do this. Um, so, you know, definitely learn in this group, learn in that group. Um, and just, you know, just learn, you know, we sign up to be eternal learners and, um, you know, just keep going, and especially in a pandemic where, you know, now you're having options and choices being taken away from you. And now you have to rethink things, you know? Right. So, you know, I definitely encourage you to, you know, expand your skills, mm -hmm. expand, you know, your, your mind, your thought processes in terms of how you go about life um, and how you go about practicing medicine. Um, and this is where, the creativity and innovation comes. And this is where I feel that we need to practice more of the art of medicine and allowing yourself to express because um, I think a lot of medicine nowadays is, you know, yes, we have to do numbers, we have to do evidence base, we have to do da uh, data and research and all that stuff. But, you know, I would, I, I would add to that, you know, where's the art, you know, where's your personal expression, where's your creativity right. in all of this. Right. And as you can see, you know, that has led me when I ask myself these questions mm -hmm. that has led me to all this. You see right. what I'm saying? 
So, right. um, you know, the main point is, you know, how have, how have I, you know, you know, applied myself using lifestyle medicine. But I think the bigger question is how have you expressed yourself in terms of medicine? So, mm -hmm. and there's like a myriad of ways, you know, and not everyone's the same. So. Right. Well, I think, you know, just kind of really hooking back on what you said, sometimes we have these ideas, but then putting it into action, there's these sort of barriers or not barriers, but these, uh, excuses not even excuses you know just this fear right comes up like what if i fail what if i look stupid what if you know technology crashes on me i don't know how to create a podcast what should i do should i be on facebook should i be on instagram it seems like especially right now everybody's on social media and it feels really crowded and crazy and and then you're sort of saying, you know, like, well, nobody's going to hear my voice, right? Like, it's just, uh, I'm just kind of expressing some of the thoughts that have gone through my head. And and what was your mindset around when you said that you were just going to do all these things, like write a book and start a podcast and, you know, create this website? How did I, you? I had no idea that I was going to start a podcast, write a book and do all the things that I did. I had no idea. That wasn't even in the horizon when I first started. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm more of a person that practices life, you know, one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think, I mean, this is going to be a little bit existential. I think a lot of people don't focus on being in the moment, um, or being present with themselves. We either live in one or two places, either in the past or in the future. Right. Um, and this is where like anxiety and depression is rooted, right? Um, you know, depression is, uh, you know, really rooted about like, you know, things that have happened, things that have already, you know, happened already right. or transpired. And people who are anxious think about what's to come, you know, what worries right. about, you know, what's ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think living in the moment, um, you know, really, really teaches us the, the very, very, um, you know, that life is very short. And I don't mean that just as a cliche, but mm -hmm. also how fragile life is. And you can see this with the pandemic, you know, the pandemic has really taught us that the fragility of life and how precious it is, um, you can't underestimate that. So you have to ask yourself, you know, what am I doing, you know, at the end of the day, who am I? What do I bring to the table? How do I, br how do I be of service to others? Mm -hmm. Obviously medicine is that calling, you know, for, for us. Right you know, we took that oath, but you know, is, is not just medicine. It doesn't have to be just medicine. It could be in, in so many different ways, you know? So this is where, like I said, the creativity and the artistic expression needs to come out and, mm -hmm. you know, be able, be able to see, you know, how you want to bob and weave. Um, to answer your question, um, you know, how do I start is really, really, you know, you kind of have to like taste tests, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a buffet. If you imagine social media is like a buffet, there's just so many different things out there, right? So you kind of have to dabble in a little bit of each mm -hmm. to kind of figure out what resonates with you and what works for you. It may not be, you know, um, you know, uh, every little thing, you know, for me, it's like, I don't do Twitter, you know, some people like Twitter, I don't, you know, I don't really resonate with Twitter, I resonate more with Facebook and Instagram, you know, um, in terms of, you know, uh, 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 social media. And, um, you know, in terms of how I got into podcasting, um, you know, I wasn't really a big blogger. Um, you know, some people can blog for days. Um, some people can vlog and, you know, do YouTube and be, be successful at it. For me, podcasting clicked for me mm -hmm. um, because I think I'm a, you know, I believe that I'm a, I'm a natural conversationalist mm -hmm. and I love, you know, connecting with people, learning about their stories. And, mm -hmm. you know, the whole premise of a podcast is understanding, you know, the centerpiece um, of podcasting, in my opinion, is, you know, understanding where people's stories, origins of stories come from, what makes them them. And mm -hmm. so my podcast is mainly an interview show and we highlight three things, plant powered living, um, emotional wellness, and learning how to thrive. And mm -hmm. so when you have a focus, you know, you stick to that focus. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to highlight people. I wanted to highlight their stories. I wanted to highlight what makes them uh, tick mm -hmm. while teaching something, um, you know, for my audience members. So at the end of every, you know, episode um, or you know, the entire episode, you learn as you go. And wow. so that was my way in terms of how to expand, um, you know, what I practice. Because right. 
because yeah. you know it, so to remember to doctor in 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 you know in latin words is to teach right uh doctore right so mm -hmm. it goes back to teaching at the end of the day so that's how i got into podcasting um writing a book was never the you know, the intention um i just I've lived a lot of great experiences and I just felt like I needed to put it down into writing. Mm -hmm. So I did. So um, never written a book before. I think back in high school, I failed every literature class. <laughs> um, and so, you know, like I said, if I could do it, you could do it, you know? Yeah. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Talk about uh, the pandemic and how that's changed. I mean, we've, we've all had to very quickly pivot because of uh, COVID. So yeah, yeah. So um, leveraging my podcast, what I did was um, I felt like I wanted to, you know, give back and contribute in my own way. So I started a COVID wellness series spinoff um, off of my podcast. Um, so what that means is, um, you know, when uh, when I created the COVID series, uh, I was already towards the end of the second season um, uh, of my podcast. And, you know, my seasons highlights different guests coming from all walks of life, um, still within health and wellness. Um, but it wasn't applicable when the pandemic started. So I said to myself, man, I really want to help and I really want to contribute and help people. So what do I do? And so what I did was um, the podcast uh, hosts kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, podcast host is kind of like a website host. It's like Wix or Squarespace. So, um, so what I did was the podcast host has a live feature uh, that came with it. So it's kind of like having your own radio show. So I'll go live right now, like we're going live right now. And, you know, people can call in and ask questions oh. and things like that. So I decided to gather a bunch of, you know, old guests and new guests and do a COVID series and kind of tap into what people know and how we could help people who are dealing with COVID. So pretty much through the months of uh, March and April, um, I did all that. I think we made like maybe nine or 10 episodes, um, mm -hmm. you know, just spanning the whole gamut, you know, like gut health, immunity, uh, mental health, um, you know, uh, what to do indoors, um, you know, just, just a whole bunch of stuff that you could find, you know, on my podcast if you're interested. But uh, that was my contribution for me. Um, uh, oh, uh, before I talk about me, what I did was I also wrote um, uh, articles for other publications. So if you don't like blogging, I think a great way to contribute, another way, great way to contribute is to help other publications um, with topics. So mm -hmm. meaning that like um, – uh, self magazine or uh, med page or stat news or um, you know Britain company was another one um, or you know just whatever publications you can get your hands on um, you know be that expert voice um, you know if you find that that publication you know for you is a worthy uh, outlet to you know you know, write about or, you know, interview about, you know, put your, put your imprint in, put your right. voice in, put your medical expression in and help them out because they, it's kind of like an octopus, you know, they have long reach, you know, they have yeah. bigger, you know, possibly bigger social circles than you, right. And right. you can reach more. Right. Um, so I ended up doing a lot more of that than blogging on my own website because yeah. I know they would have a bigger reach. That makes um, sense. Yeah. So that's what I did. And um, personally, uh, with the pandemic, I did a lot of self-reflection. I've noticed that I was personally very, very anxious um, in the beginning. It was very hard for me to kind of do uh, go through this. And so, you know, I ended up, you know, speaking to a lot of family members, speaking to a lot of close friends, um, ended up reconnecting with a lot of uh, childhood friends, high school friends. Um, and so that helped me a lot. Um, I live in LA, so, you know, it's pretty much always sunny here. So I have, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to, you know, go outside whenever I can work out. Um, you know, obviously working out is a huge, uh, part of releasing any, uh, anxiousness and stress for myself. Right. And then, um, during this time I've, uh, thought about, you know, my why, you know, a great book to pick up, um, or a book that I would refer you to is, um, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Yeah. Um, and it's a great book because, you know, we all know what we do, which is the what and how we do it. 
you know, which is the how. Right. But many companies and businesses that this author researched about, when they asked them, like, why you do this, you know, mm -hmm. what is the point? What is the values and beliefs? What is the why? What is the mission behind it? A mm -hmm. lot of those businesses and organizations can't answer it. They know mm -hmm. what they do. They know the products and services they do, and they know okay. how to make it, right? But they don't, they couldn't really understand the why behind it. You know, what is the juice, you know, behind it? Mm -hmm. And so when I read that book, um, amongst other books, um, you know, I'm, I, I love self-help books and, self and personal development books. Um, you know, I, 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 I redefined my why. And I thought about my passions, my mission, and my purpose again. And I thought about how can I reapply that, you know, in terms of others mm -hmm. um, and how do I lead by example? I, I'm a huge proponent. If you're into lifestyle medicine, it's really about practicing what you preach. It's right. about leadership. It's about role modeling and, right. you know, living that um, by example. Sure. And so, um, you know, I had to redefine that and figure out, you know, amongst this time, how do I be of better service, you know, for mm -hmm. others, you know, mm -hmm. so that's different for me. That's going to be different for you. But right. in order to get there, I, I would implore you and encourage you to think about, you know, what is your why and, you know, redefine who you are in this time period, not right. before, not in the future, but like at this time period. Right. And I think that will, you know, help, um, help, uh, help you, uh, go along. Yeah. And then I, I, honestly, my last thing would be, you know, living a full life without any, any regrets, mm -hmm. um, simultaneously being of service to others. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, uh, being service to others will ultimately add to your happiness bank, right. um, and, you know, keep you chugging along and whether it's in lifestyle medicine or something else that you decide to bring forward, right. um, you know, just, you know, remember to live, you know, live a full life, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, just get the, get as much juice as you can because the pandemic has really taught us that, you know, it's very short, it's very fragile and it's very, you know, um, you know, precious. So yeah. no kidding. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's sort of cliche to say, say that, right? Like life is short, you know, make the best of it. And yet our behaviors tend to be, uh, tend to be that we believe that we have all the time in the world, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll exactly. do it when, you know, we'll do it when I, when I finish that course, when I've taken that, you know, Instagram work class, or, you know, master class or whatever it is. And I just like your idea of, you know, all, because so many creative ideas just die as long as you keep it inside your mind and you don't do anything with it. Right. It's only yes. when you, take those uh, those creative ideas that you have and translate it into action that you can actually make a difference in the world that's tangible and that affects you know other people yeah and I think a lot of us like I said do get hung up because especially in medicine there's definitely a sense of you know the imposter syndrome there's a sense of perfectionism mm -hmm. right like oh till I get it perfect I can't put it out in the world and we just have to be willing to stumble and fall and pick ourselves up again and you know laugh about it with a sense of humor and just use them as corrections along the way mm -hmm. rather than uh, oh dear lord you know i failed and i'm not ever going to attempt this again um right 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 and, and you know of course the most common example which we all know and it sounds so obvious is we all learn to walk we didn't, we didn't know how to walk when we were four months old, but we all did and we didn't get it the first time. You know, we fell a million times on our butts before we got up and, and did it. So, and that's why I kind of wanted to bring on um, different physicians who have shown, like you said, that it is possible to do, it is possible to explore, even within just the framework of lifestyle medicine, there's so many pieces. Like, I mean, I've, interviewed such a no two um guests on this on this summit have been the same not two none of them everybody's doing you know some people are more in academics some people mm -hmm. are more in health coaching you know some people are doing group um classes or shared medical appointments mm -hmm. um, i've had a surgeon i've had an interventional radiologist so specialty doesn't matter right i mean like we have all these ideas and I think we just need to let go of them and just go for it, you know? And like you said, 
some things work out and you pursue that and some things might not, you might try it. And that's happened with me. You know, I'll try a few things and I'm like, oh, that really wasn't what I wanted to do. I just wanted to do something different. And that's okay because I think life is all about learning, about growing. As long as we keep stepping out outside of our comfort zone, that's when growth happens, right? It's so easy to be within that safe zone of, oh, I know this part and this is what I'll keep doing. But when you're willing to step out and be vulnerable and show people that, you know, I'm sorry, I, I tried this and it didn't work. Um, it, it just makes you even more, um, you know, appealing. Like people get that because you're resonating at that level, right, you know? Right, yeah. right. I would probably add to that, you know, and I agree with everything you said. I would probably add to that is, you know, definitely have a support system, you know, yeah. whether it's your spouse, your children, um, your friend, um, siblings, whatever the case may be, having that support system, um, you know, having that support system that is a put yourself into a positive environment. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, if you're counseling a patient to stop, you know, quit smoking. And right. if they go back to their circle of friends that still smoke, it's, you know, the likelihood they're going to quit is not that great. So it's the same thing with you is, you know, you want to put yourself amongst people that want the best for you, you know, that yeah. has your best interests at heart. And honestly, you'll be able to dominate anything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So because, I mean, yeah. I've had these doubts you know, myself, you know, yeah. I went through, you know, I've went through imposter syndrome. I went through all of that, you know what I'm saying? So, but you kind of have to, you know, you have to put yourself out there. Like you said, you have to stumble and fall, you know, like, you know, just last week, you know, I just went biking and I fell off my bike, you know, it's like, it, it's, it, you know, that's a literal sense, but you know, metaphorical sense, you know, you gotta, you gotta pick yourself up more than you fall, you know, yeah. that's the key. That's the key. As long as you can pick yourself up more than you fall, you'll be you'll be fine. Just one step at a time. One step at a time. Right. So, Colin, what's what's been happening during COVID? Are you still working? Um, you mentioned traveling physician. Is that kind of like locums that you were doing? What are you doing right now? And what are you kind of looking to the near future? Um, you know, because nobody knows how long this pandemic is going to go on. What have what is some of that self soul searching? brought up in you in terms of how you want to continue to serve? Yeah. Um, so I've transitioned um, out of locums for the time being. Um, and I was working for um, a, another office. And uh, right now I'm transitioning towards uh, just doing remote work, um, like telehealth. Um, and then I'm going to be uh, create, you know, I'm, I'm going to be transitioned to creating businesses, um, you know, within uh, the lifestyle, you know, realm. And, um, you know, that'll be coming down the pike, you know, in the future. But in the meantime, I continue to podcast, continue to, you know, offer as much as I can via my website. Um, I definitely have an another book in me um, down the road. Um, and uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, similar to you, you know, I'm also interested in, you know, creating a virtual summit as well. So I think it's a fantastic, you know, venue and, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep everyone in touch. Yeah. Wow. So you do, I mean, st still a full plate. <laughs> yeah. 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 I keep myself busy. I, I, I don't understand boredom. Like I don't know the feeling of boredom. Um, so when people say that they're bored in a pandemic, I, I can't relate. So That's why I started this. I mean, you, okay. This I'm telling you, there was no planning around this whatsoever. Okay. Uh -huh. But you know, I was like, We've had this group, we have about 1200 physicians in here. And you know, once in a while there's some little post or something. And I was like, I wanted to really like give it a boost. You know, yeah. it's like, we need to do something. Like everybody's feeling this, right? Like whether you're in, on the front lines working in the hospital or like you and me, we're at home doing telehealth. We, we, there's, this, there's something that arises in you in times of a crisis, right? Like this, 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 this momentum that gets created. There's this, I don't know, this kind of wanting to jump into the fire almost, you know? And I was like, oh my God, I, like I got to do something. I had no idea about StreamYard or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. and so I reached out to the other moderators and I said, hey, is that okay if I do this? And they were like, yeah, go for it. It's a great idea. And one of them said, you know, use my account, you know, Heather Hammerstadt, and because she's got this business. And that's how I even learned about StreamYard, you know? And so, and it's been wonderful. I mean, I think it's just so great because people can go back and listen to it. I'm going to put this on YouTube. Uh, we're making it public. I'm disabling comments because I cannot stand the trolling. On. I, I, 
I have not developed that that much of a thick skin yet. So I've just disabled the comments, but it's available for the public to watch. I'm asking yeah. people to subscribe, you know, let their friends and family know. Because like you said, with every episode, there there's some part of wisdom. It's going to touch somebody's life. And when it touches somebody's life, it touches their family, it touches their community. And yeah. that's how we grow this, right? Because ultimately our passion is a healthy population. Mm -hmm. Right. That's kind of what lifestyle medicine is all about is we want to see a healthier and happier population, you know, yeah. a healthier and happier communities. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, thank you for doing your, 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 your part and your contribution. I think this is great. So, yeah, well, thank you so much. And uh, do you have any last uh, minute parting words for our audience and where they can find you and how they can follow you? I've subscribed to your podcast already. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, I listening to podcasts. I think I have like 40 on them, including like Rich Roll and, you know, all these people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, what I did was um, I think I put up my... Yeah, you, that, that, there was that last. Yeah, one. yeah, that last. So these these are my contacts here. Um, if you want to uh, subscribe, if you just go to my main website, um, it pretty much has everything. Okay, good. Um, and uh, that's chefdogzoo.com. And um, yeah, so uh, just go there. My parting words is, uh, you know, just uh, chin up, keep going. Um, you know, don't worry about when this is going to end, you know, um, like all things in life, um, you know, it's, it's not everything is forever. Right. Um, so, you know, we just got to do our part, keep each other safe, keep, you know, be, be mindful of keeping others safe. Um, I think that's, you know, obvious for our listeners. Um, but yeah, just uh, keep living, you know, to the fullest, keep cooking, you know, and just continue to love each other, just be kind to one another. So that's, that's ultimately what we need, you know, uh, the most. I, I love that message. Again, thank you so much, Colin. Really appreciate you being with us this evening. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Take care. All right. Bye-bye.